different steps in training process. That's what the session that, I mean, that's the topic that we are going to deal with today. So of course, this topic is uh, that comes under the subject human resource management. Basically, uh, to speak about this human resource management, uh, most of them, I mean, uh, all of them might be a working professional. So you might be able to understand importance of human resource management in an organization, right? So mostly there is a separate department known as human resource department where that I mean where there arises n number of procedures to be taken place, which means human resource department is an important department that encloses or that considers or that manages all the other department, right? Why? Because there are people who are working in the organization and this people we are talking about about the employees working. And this, they are considered as a resources. Why? Because they are valuable to the organization. Only with the help of human resources, you are able to run the organization very smoothly. Okay. So before I start with this session, let's see what is, a, I mean, a today's outline. I mean, the objectives, what are we going to deal with today's session? First of all, we'll, let's see what is a human resource management. Then a term specifically, you call it as human resource planning. In short, you call it as HRP. So what is HRP? Then recruitment and selection. That's very basic topic. And uh, you need to understand what is recruitment and selection before you understand the training. Okay. So then we'll start with the training and why training is important to an organization. What is the significance? What is the need for training? particularly in the organization. Then what are the different steps or what are the different procedures that is involved in training process? Then when we study, I mean, when we come across these steps in training process, you will be able to understand a specific methods that is used in training. We'll see what it is in the coming, I mean, coming slides and all. So we'll quickly start the session. Human resource management, that is HRM. So you split that word into three types. I mean, three words you come, human resource and management. As I said before, human resource is something valuable to the organization. A resource itself means something that has value, right? So human resource means the human beings who are there in the organization that we consider as a valuable resource. Now, why? Why do we consider them as a valuable resource? Okay, so human resource, they are the people working in the organization and their management is very important. How do you manage them? See, every human beings are individually different. They are especially unique. No two persons are similar at all. They might be creative in their sense. Some of them might have some of their, I mean, different uh, set of characters and qualities in them. So it's very difficult to analyze, I mean, treat all the employees in the same manner. Okay, so managing them is the most important and the crucial step an organization has to take. Okay, so you have to optimize. You have to make sure that you, you make them use. I mean, you make use of their best quality. You have to make use of their skills. You have to make use of their qualities, the characteristics, their working knowledge and all so that you can able to, I mean, you are able to achieve the goals as well as the objectives of the organization. Every organization, for what purposes they are running the organization? Of course, they have a different set of objectives in their mind, right? So they need to satisfy their objective. They need to fulfill their goals. So to fulfill that goals, we need the help of this human being. Right. So what the organization have to do, optimize and make best use of their limited quality, limited resources that we have in our hand. OK, so human resource management or HRM is meant for proper utilization of available skill force. We already have a few, few people in our hand. You have to make efficient use of those people in the organization. So at the end, you will be able to achieve the objectives of the organization, right? So this is a management function concerned with hiring. You hire the people, you motivate them, and you try to maintain that particular people in the organization. So its basic purpose is to improve the productive contributions of people. What contribution a people or a human beings can contribute towards the organization? Analyze that, properly manage it, that's it. 
okay so it tries to bring the people and i mean people and the organization together so that goals of each are met every people have their own personal objectives as well right why do people working in a well reputed organization because they want career growth they want some i mean personal objectives to be fulfilled only then in future i'll be able to work in a well reputed much more reputed organization right and at the same time organization can meet their objectives they can earn more profit the more profit in the coming years right so both of them make sure that both of them achieve their goals personally as well as the organizational aspect okay now what is a human resource planning see we all need a, always a available woman power in our hand okay so this planning is most important for both the organization and the employees why why because it is a process of determining the manpower needs see for example you are aware about the i mean you means the organization is aware about the fact that a particular people a particular person that particular person is about to resign the coming month i mean the next month so that particular employee is supposed to handle many things in the organization which is very essential that you cannot delay at, at any cost right so what the organization have to do the organization have to make a proper planning so that particular position does not remain vacant at all at in for a single day even so what the organization have to do a proper planning so it is a process human resource planning this is a process of determining and assuming that the organization will always have an adequate number of qualified persons available at proper times performing their own jobs which meet the needs of enterprise and provides the satisfaction for the individuals involved which means if you are aware about the fact that that particular employee is about to resign the next month you make sure or you in advance what you have to do make sure that a new employee is ready for working once the employee gets resigned okay so you don't want the that particular position to remain vacant okay so that is a process and that particular process is known as human resource planning in short you call it as hrp okay i repeat this is a process of determining and assuming that the organization will always have an adequate number always the employee i mean organization should have the available persons or qualified persons at every time to handle all the jobs okay so every people every employees have their own jobs to handle that should never get delayed if at all that um, i mean that particular uh, activity or the jobs get delay what happens that's definitely going to affect the organizational activities their per perfect uh, smooth running will be affected okay so the organization have to make a proper human resource planning as well then the next thing is about the recruitment now this is a common term that we have come across what is recruitment it is a process of searching for a prospective employees and stimulating them to apply for the jobs in the organization now this particular process is considered as a positive process why why because this process encourage the applicants to seek jobs in the firm see most of us have might come across the uh, job notifications that i mean you come across in indeed in linkedin in newspaper in uh, the some other vacant slot and employment for i mean your sites and all okay that is very casual that is a way of recruitment that has been done from the side of the organization so once you get to see this particular notification what is the next thing you do you will apply for the job okay you will see whether the qualification you, you meet the criteria of the qualification set by the organization and if you find satisfied you will definitely apply for the job right now when the i mean uh, when you consider from the viewpoint of the organization organization is me is in need of only one vacant post i mean is one particular candidate they need only one candidate out of it 
but how many number of people would be applying for that particular job okay so imagine so recruitment means it is some way of encouragement you are encouraging the applicants to apply for the job if you are lucky you might be satisfying the criteria and you will be selected okay so so this tends to locate and reach out to the potential applicants wherever they are and it offers an incentive to stimulate them to apply for the vacancies offered now from the side of the organization they will screen those applicants um, applications and what they do is that they will make a short i mean shortlist the person if if uh, 500 persons have been applied for a particular job they can never accept those 500 people or they cannot accommodate those 500 people for an interview right so what they do you shortlist them you make sure that i mean accurate number of persons have been shortlisted okay so it's nothing but recruitment is all about searching for employees you want some employees you are in need of an employee so you are publishing a notification or you are posting a uh, job in the say different sites or in newspapers wherever you wish to and you are stimulating them to apply for the job you are asking every person to apply for the job the organization will decide whether to hire you or not so that is a process of recruitment now once you are done with the recruitment then the next stage is selecting them selecting the most appropriate the most suitable persons who have who meet the criteria that we have put okay so selection is the process by which an organization chooses from a list of screened applicants so you have already done a screening okay and after that you have already you already have a list of applicants with you and out of that listed applicants you will be calling them for an interview and based on their interview performance you would find the best people out of it if only 10 people have been shortlisted you interview all the 10 people and once you have once you find out that this is a right candidate for us you will be asked them you will be selecting that particular candidate okay so that is a process so selection is the process by which an organization chooses from a list of screened applicants who meet the who best meet the criteria for the position available now unlike recruitment selection is considered as a negative process why because this particular process involves a large number of rejection recruitment means you are encouraging them to apply a large number of applicants but selection means in some way you are rejecting a good number of applicants who apply and leaving the best one to be hired so all the remaining see in all the remaining nine candidates might not be uh, i mean they might be good enough to work at that particular job but you are in need of only one uh, one employee right so that is the reason why you have rejected all the other nine candidates so selection involves a possible amount of rejection so that is why this particular process is considered as a negative process okay so recruitment is a positive process and selection is a negative process now let's get into our topic training now once the employee is being selected you will be asking i mean you will say that particular person to join this date or the next month or whatever it might be so once the employee is selected the what is a very next thing an organization have to do from their side provide them training every new so some of the employees might be very fresher or some of the employees might be experienced one but now he might not be aware about the uh, your organization's policy your organization's way of doing everything so it's mandatory that an organization have to provide training especially to the people who are new to the organization so training it helps in increasing an employee's knowledge so this is a learning process so you call training as a learning process that helps an employee acquire new knowledge new skills required to be performed to i mean to their present jobs efficiently how he can perform his job efficiently so you are adding some new knowledge and skills to that particular employee so that he perform everything in a right manner 
So this is all about making a difference between where the worker stands at present and where he will be after some point of time. Okay, so he have some knowledge in him, but you want to improve his knowledge, improve his skills. So you are putting, adding some more knowledge to him. Okay, so that is a difference and that particular difference is talking, we are talking about in the training. So this is usually a short term skill development exercise meant for non-managerial employees, either to learn a job or to overcome their deficiency in performance of the present job. So this training might be the duration of the training depends upon the organization. So it's the organization that decides how much number, I mean, what is the duration? Maybe it's 15 days, maybe three months. If it's a very well, I mean, um, multinational companies and all, if their jobs are that much responsible enough, you have to provide them enough training. Okay, so three months training, two months training, 15 days, even one week training is also being implemented by different organization. Respecting, I mean, that depends upon the nature of the organization, whether it be a big organization or small organization. But providing training is very essential because only then the employees will be, you will make the employees best fit for the, that particular job. So that helps him to perform his job very efficiently and prepare himself for the higher level jobs as well. Okay, then what is the significance and why do we say employees providing training to the employees is very essential? What is a need for training in an organization? First one, enlargement of skills and competency. See, you, are, you want to enlarge, enhance the technical knowledge and skills of the employees at all levels, whether it be at the lower level, middle level or top level, providing training will help to widen the knowledge and widen the skills an employee has. That helps the employee to learn new skills, new knowledge continuously. That will make him remain updated. I mean, that will make him remain up to date with all the things. Okay, so whatever be the uh, nature of the job, providing training to the employees is very essential. That is a basic and essential step an organization have to take from there. That's an initiative an, I mean, organization have to take. Secondly, effective utilization of existing human resource. See, we know that human resources is very valuable to the organization, right? So when you provide them training, what happens? That will lead to improved performance. You will perform efficiently, much more efficiently, right? So you make optimum utilization of the available. You have some human resources with you. So make best use of it. Achieve both the, I mean, uh, individual will be having a personal goals. Organization would be having their own objective. I mean, organizational goals as well, right? So. Make sure that both of them go easily and together. Manage them very efficiently. So both the organization and both the, I mean, both the organization and individuals achieve their goals efficiently. Okay. Now the third one is enhancement of customer satisfaction. Now the organizations are compelled to ensure the superior quality. You have to provide the quality goods to the customers. I mean, you're compelled to lower your cost provide the better services to the customer. So if you expect your customer to be satisfied, make sure that you provide a good training to the employees because the employees are the person who, uh, they are the person who communicate with these customers, right? So if you want the customer satisfaction, provide training is very essential. Then enrichment of team spirit. Team spirit, you have to promote team spirit among the organization. The inter-team cooperation among the employees is very essential. So cooperation from the side of the employees is very essential. For that, you are in need of employee training, providing training. Then personal growth. So that personal growth means definitely once you are provided training to the employees, the employee itself starts to develop. Training will ultimately lead to a development among the employee. The employee will have a self-development. So he will upgrade to different, uh, I mean, different modern technological skills. He'll be having a modern technological knowledge, etc. 
So he'll be updated, upgraded to all the technology, new, new technology, the company is being adopted. So training is like an investment. So once you provide the training, that will never go waste. Okay, so that is like an investment in people. You are investing in your people, in your people in the sense, in your employees itself. Then enabling a learning culture. Learning culture is must, that must be promoted within an organization. Once you promote a learning culture in your organization, that will definitely lead to a long-term strategic success. One or the other day, the organization will succeed. Okay, then finally, encouraging the better health and safety measures. So this training is being provided in different ways. Sometimes safety training would be provided. How an employee have to be safe? How an employee have to perform, I mean, safely handle this particular equipment to avoid the danger. So that is a way of teaching the employees about the safety measures, safety measures to be followed so that yeah, the employees have a minima, yeah, the organization can minimize the accidents or any other, any other illness or sicknesses. There's a chance of illnesses being arising in the organization. Chance of accident um, the working place is very, I mean, it's very common. So to avoid that, make sure the organization provide a proper training. Make sure the organization teach the employees well so that they are safe from their workplace. Okay, so better health and safety measures is again important. So these are the some of the reasons why we say employee training is essential. Okay, now let's see what is the steps or what are the procedures involved in training? So the procedures have been shown as a simple way. I mean, uh, the names of the, we'll go through the uh, firstly, the major steps involved in the training. Firstly, determine the needs. What type of, I mean, what type of training the employee is in need of? So determine the needs of training. Second one, develop the objectives. What is the objective? What is the training objective? So developing the objectives of training. Choose the technique. Technique in the sense, what is a method? What method of training is being provided by the organization? So choose the method or technique. Fourth one, identify the trainer. There must be a person who trained the employees, right? So the organization have to choose the trainer who have to be the trainer, who is well in providing training to the employees. For fifth one is implement. Once you find, I mean, once you analyze this type of technique, I mean, this method, this training is needed. So in the next step is implement them, implement the program. And finally, evaluate. Evaluation is very essential after all these stages. It's very essential to evaluate whether the training have been run in a, I mean, a proper manner, whether the training lead to an efficient efficiency or not. So these are the Steps in an employee training process. Now we'll see one by one. First one is determination of training needs. So first of all, the organization have to identify whether this type of training is needed or needed or not. So the first step is to identify the specific operational skills to be developed for, a, for performing a job. So you have to identify the real needs of an employee. What really the employee is needed, whether he is in need of this particular training or not, that is very essential. So make sure that particular training is well needed for the organization. Identify the real needs of an employee. What is the weakness of an employee? So make sure that you clean that. Okay, so generally to recognize the training needs of an employee is an analysis has to be made. What type of analysis? Now, this analysis is broadly, I mean, considered under three levels. An analysis at three levels is being undertaken. First of all, under organization analysis. Second one is operational analysis. The third one is uh, individual analysis. So, there are three and that type of analysis needed, one in organization-wise analysis, operation-wise and individual-wise analysis. Organization means what? 
the area where the need i mean training is needed in which particular area this employee needs training so he might be very weak in understanding i mean everything maintaining everything up to date up to date so you know what particular weakness have the i mean the employee have so identify that area you identify which area the training needs i mean the employee is in need of okay then you identify the organization analysis means you are supposed to identify the organizational objective what is the objective of the organization what is the mission what is the vision what is the goal of the organization examine them carefully and then compare with the existing manpower inventory to determine the training needs so first of all you identify what is the objective of the organization then you compare it with your employee whether he is able to satisfy or whether he is able to achieve the goals of the organization as well so that is the analysis under organizational level second one operational wise what type of task is to be performed by this particular employee what type of task so this involves the proper examination of work to be performed after training see he is supposed to handle all the accounts he is supposed to handle all the i mean he is supposed to prepare all the quotations he have to deal with all the clients so the employee i mean organization have to i mean make them understand how you should deal with a client how you should prepare a quotation so once you prepare a quotation or uh, what to say once you prepare a quotation or quote make sure that what are the things you have to consider so he have to do all these things alone after the training right so you make them organization or what type of task an employee is supposed to perform that is very essential what competency is been required by an employee to perform that task efficiently okay so this involves the collection of information about the competencies required for effective job performance as well so operation wise analysis is the second type of analysis and finally individual analysis individual analysis means what it's like an individual training needs who should be trained what should be taught or what job knowledge and skills that the person must have to perform this so to perform this particular job what type of skill he should possess what type of knowledge he must possess that is the thing and individually what is an individual aspect individual training needs is being analyzed under this analysis so basically three these three types of analysis is being conducted under i mean under this first stage that is determination of training need so this is the first step involved in training you identify which area i mean which area the employee needs training that is the first thing an organization have to see the second i mean the second stage is development of training objectives so training objective means once the training goals has been established the next step is to determine the specific objective see every training program have its own objectives my training program would be to i mean uh, making them employee uh, familiar or make them employee teach all the things regarding the quotation wise or regarding the admin level jobs or regarding the sales and marketing jobs so i need to come accomplish all the things i need to teach the employee everything about the sales i need to teach the employee everything about the operation or department okay so every training program have its own objectives so once you once you're done with the training you make sure that you have achieved your objectives you have a t i mean you taught all the things necessary to perform that particular job okay so however these objectives must be directly related to the assessed training needs and should focus on satisfying those needs so every training program must have a clear and concise objectives and that must be developed to achieve the organizational goals as well so developing the training objectives is the second step the organization has to see now the third one is selection of training technique now once you are once you have identified the need of training 
and then you identified the i mean you have developed an objective for your particular training the third step is which method i have to choose which method is the best one so basically there are two types of training method or there are two types of training technique or two techniques of training and you call them as on the job training the second one is off the job training so that name itself defines them on the job training and off the job training so in the middle of this uh, steps in the training process i am just uh, i mean uh, making you aware about the these two methods as well okay we'll see what are these two methods on the job which means you are imparting a real time training at the work spot even while doing the actual job see once you are put into a job you are actually doing your daily activity in your job you are actually dealing with your work along with that as a part of your job on a day to day basis i mean in your working time is you, if you, if you you have a specific working time in your office right so in that working time itself half an hour or one hour training would be provided in the organization itself so the employees are asked to learn their job by actually doing it that you, that is why you call it as on the job which means you are training you are being trained in the mid of your job you are not you are, you are not been taken to some other place for training you are not been taken to any training center but you are given you are been given training when you are actually doing your job so imparting a real time that is provided at the workplace this type of training or this type of teaching is been handled in your workplace itself okay in your working time itself so this type of training is usually practiced on a day to day basis along with or as a part of the job now the second type of technique is off the job that is just the opposite this type of training means this training takes place at a place away from the work spot and in formal classroom so off the job means when the training is being provided you are not being asked to do your job which means that particular training would be i mean would be handled apart from your workplace somewhere further away or maybe near your workplace okay so this might be your training center or any other specified classroom setup and all that depends upon the organization so this purpose of this job of the job training is to minimize the distraction to the trainees and this methods are ideal for teaching the theoretical aspects of the job so that is why you call it as off the job training so now let's see before we continue with the training process i will just give you some examples for this on the job and off the job training first one under on the job training first one is job rotation see job rotation is a one way of giving an on the job training rotating i mean rotating your daily activities rotating from one job to your particular job one week maybe you might be uh, what to say you are used to do your admin works every day on a daily basis you are very specialized in doing that but the next week you have been asked to handle this particular admin along with the admin you have been asked to handle the account section as well so which means the organization wants to make you specialized in the other category or other area as well that is a basic objective of job rotation so the purpose of this method is to expose the employees beyond the scope of their present knowledge see they had they do have knowledge about handling all the admin works but the employee needs to widen their knowledge employee needs much more knowledge in this particular area as well so you are giving additional responsibility or else an employee would be asked to move from one job to the other job just so that they can improve their knowledge improve their skills their experience etc so they are frequently applied by the organization to promote effective teamwork so you switch the person's job from one area to the other area that is the perfect example of on the job training now the second one is internship now this is a common term or the common placement services that we that we heard 
about uh, basically this is being conducted in the organ i mean uh, in the colleges and all so what is the purpose of this all most of the students who are i mean mba students who are course masters the colleges would be taking an initiative for an internship the i mean the management would be asking the post graduate students to go for i mean go uh, i mean undertake an internship the internship duration might vary maybe for one month 15 days two months three months depends depends upon the decision taken by the management now what the students are asked to do they are masters i mean the persons who i mean the students who pursue this uh, courses mba uh, mcom and other master degrees they already have theoretical knowledge right they already have theoretical knowledge of every aspect they deal with n number of subjects in their entire care i mean entire study okay so along with this theory session they are been asked to involve in the business practice that means get into the business practice so they would be placed to some other company they would be asked to join some other company let's say abc company xyz company so if they have been asked to work in this particular company for a period of one month that's the duration means they are supposed to work there only for a one month that's a temporary job no obligation from the side of the company to hire them permanently after the training and no obligation from the side of the students to agree to that job offers of the company once they are done with their studies so there is no obligation from both end but what they are trying to i mean what they are trying to learn is understand <laughs> how does the business how does the business is how is the business functioning because they are supposed to work in a uh, work once they have uh, once they finish their studies right so this is like a temporary job where the participants can combine their theory which is learned in the college i mean with the pre business practices that is known as internship so these are the two examples of on the job training now when we consider of the job training that is example we can say simulation method simulation method means what this is like an m method uh, can you please um, un, i mean mute your i, I can hear somebody's okay so simulation method now this method is employed when it is impossible or risky to provide the trainees on the job training so if the organization is finding very difficult to handle uh, i mean on the job training when it's not possible there are some situation where the um, organization can afford cannot afford to the on the job training methods so they simply switch to simulation type of method now what does this method tells us this is a technique that creates a situation which as nearly as possible replicates the real one so you are creating just an artificially you are making an artificial workplace so that you are putting the employees to work over there okay so this refers to an any equipment that attempts to provide a realistic decision making environment for the trainee for simple example i can tell you about the people who have been working as a pilot i mean they are being trained to handle this airplane so how can we handle is it necessary is it possible uh, to give an a real real airplane to that particular pilot or that particular student to take care of it's not possible that is risky on one hand and on the other hand that includes a damages if that dam if any type of damage happens that's very costly it's not possible for that particular institutions to afford it so what do they do so since they are expensive since they are expensive uh, to make uh, make the employees handle it they just make a real i mean that artificially they they are make an aeroplane that is uh, and may, you make them available for that particular student to do, do that okay so this is basically done to avoid the risky i mean the uh, you you were considering the trainees like you wanted to consider the risk i do don't want to risk the life of a trainee at the same time you cannot afford to the costly damage that might incur so you simply create an aeroplane that is artificial aeroplane and you make them do that so that is a some one example simulation means you are creating an artificial workplace so that the employees can really understand how he will be able to handle this 
when he are in i mean when he is all uh, when he comes on board okay so that is simulation method next one is lecture method now this is very simple this is a lecture method is just like a chalk and talk method you are giving a knowledge to a larger number of trainees at the same time for example if a five or six number of um, uh, candidates have been uh, appointed to that particular organization you wanted to give that all the seven employees same level of training same level of training so the best method is providing the lecture so this type of method is basically used when you have a limited time in your hand see you don't have many time to provide in three months or two months training and all so just 15 days is enough means this method is much appropriate so this is a way, way of verbal form of delivering the information you provide as much knowledge as much new knowledge new skills to the trainees and make them capable of doing all the work easily okay so that is the lecture method so lecture method and the simulation method is the two examples or two different way of uh, two different type under of the job training so that is the uh, that is about the technique of training so selecting the organization have to decide which method of training to provide so that is the third step involved you have to choose whether you have to provide on the job training and if you are willing to provide on the job training what type of on the job you have n number of list in your hand so out of the, i mean these jobs which one you have to choose okay so that is the third step now moving on to our process once you are finalized once you choose the i mean once you have selected the training method the next thing is identify the trainer who have to provide the training there is always a person to teach now who is that person okay so this is a critical step because the success of the whole training effort relies greatly upon that particular trainer's ability so how the trainer is teaching them how the trainer is imparting the knowledge the way they are doing the method the tools they use so the task of designing organizing implementing and pre and post assessment of the training process are usually entrusted only to these trainers they must be adequately competent knowledgeable and mature enough with their effective communication skill so this particular trainer should have all the knowledge about the company as well he must know the philosophy of the company he must know the uh he must have an idea about the objectives vision methods the activities being undertaken in an organization so everything every aspect of uh knowledge every aspect is is must is must for the trainer to be aware of okay so the trainer must have a complete knowledge about all the matter he must not have i mean he must not have any uh, any sort of doubt for, um, i mean in any confusion in his mind so because he is supposed to deliver all these things to the a new employees so make sure that you identify the trainer well only then you can i mean you can ensure that the training is effective in all the way so identifying the trainer who have to give the training is very to the i mean you have to answer that question the answer to that question is very essential so identifying the trainer is the next i mean next step then the next step is implementing once you finalize the step method once you finalize the uh, trainer the next thing is the implementation of that program how would you implement it once you design once you decide the method on the trainer the next step is actual implementation you are just making them into practical okay so for successful implementation what are the things that you have to consider the location convenient look and me convenience of location is info, important comfortableness of the training facility quality and adequacy of the provided materials and the timing and duration how may how, i mean what is the duration of the training what are the materials that you have to provide to them i mean what are the different facilities available for training is there any different tools and techniques or methods uh, available in that particular area which location you have to choose the location okay so this is this is very important and only then you are actually implementing it you are actually making them into real so that is implementation 
and once the training is completed the final stage is employee training process is evaluation evaluate them how did the training go how effective the training was you have to compare the knowledge of the employee see before he did not know uh, did not have any aware he was not aware about all these facts now is he aware about everything once the training is completed you identify whether the all the employees are aware about all the things regarding the organization regarding the job he have to perform regarding the colleagues everything so an evaluation of these attributes after the training will facilitate a meaningful comparison to determine the effectiveness of the training program okay so evaluation is the final step involved in the training process so that's a, that was about the training i mean uh, stages involved in training first of all you have to determine the need in which area the employee needs training second one when once before you start the training make sure that your training program have a well set of i mean a uh, well concise objective the third one you have to choose the method or choose the technique whether it's an on the job training whether you are ready to provide off the job training the fourth one is who is supposed to provide the training identify the trainer then once you have once you have a complete idea about all the steps make sure you are i mean you are ready to implement the program and once the training is completed you are conducting an evaluation analyzing whether you whether the uh, training was a successful or not whether the employee got to know about all the things so that is about the evaluation okay and finally we will let's see what are the different conditions necessary for an effective that's the last final topic conditions necessary for an effective training program what are the things that uh, organization have to take may to make sure that the program have I mean training program is being effective first of all support from the top management the top management must be support and they must understand the need for training they must not think that see this is a costly process so we don't want to spare our time just uh, giving them training and all so it's unnecessary that should not be the viewpoint of the management but i mean what they have to do they have to be very supportive they have to be very committed towards this training they must treat this training as an investment only if you put an investment in the, i mean today in i mean when the organization is taking an initiative for this training that is definitely going to be affect in future i mean affect in the sense na positively so support from the side of top management is very essential now the second one is nurture a positive mindset among its trainees and its training program so it's very essential that an employee or the trainee must be willing to uh, willing for this particular training his mind his mindset must be in such a way that he is ready to accept i mean he is ready to take that program so the cooperation or the cooperation from the side of trainee is very essential if he is willing only then this particular training would be effective so only then he can understand he can learn new skills knowledge and uh, very very easily and quickly okay so the positive mindset among the trainees is again important then adoption of a continuous process this i mean uh, a management should adopt a i mean should adopt a comprehensive a continuous at the same time a systematic approach to meet the training needs of their employees so adopting this as a continuous process there should not be any delay is very essential there must be a system you must, that must systematically happen and finally form and timing of training now ideal time to learn in the time i mean I, ideal time to learn is the time when the training is helpful to the employees the organization should always have should scan the opportunities they have to scan the environment so they have to understand what are the opportunities being available outside what are the threats what are the weakness an organization is being facing you have to identify this that can be identified only through scanning process okay so organization must be up to date in scanning their environment at the same time you have to provide the training at the correct time so once you appoint an employee freshly to the organization give them training as soon as possible do not put them into a job before you provide adequate training 
okay so in order to avoid the mistakes from the side of an employees you make sure that the particular employee is being well trained only then you can expect a positive side i mean pos positive response from the side of an employee okay so the timing and the type of training to be provided is very essential it's very essential to be decided by the organization itself okay so that's it so we we'll, we go to learn about i mean we understood different aspects in this i mean from starting from the human resource management these are the things that is being seen in the organization when you consider the human resource department that particular department is responsible for taking all these things they are res responsible to provide the training to the new employees right so there are different stages i mean different process that takes place in the organization that starts from the human resource planning once you plan the human resource where you make sure that every adequate number of persons are available in the organization then you start your recruitment if you find that this particular position is vacant you next moment you have to start with the recruitment once you are done with the recruitment you select the people select the best among them who and n number of people might have applied for the job what you have to do select the best out of it okay and once you select the an employee once you select a particular candidate before you make them start i mean make them do the job the very it's very essential to provide the training okay so the training is being followed under different steps starting from the need of training and ending with the evaluation okay so that is the different set of procedures or the steps that is involved in training okay so that's the end of the session um i mean we have come across all the topics i mean uh, not just the training but we came across a uh, different uh, topics apart from training as well the procedures that might be taken before the process of training what are the different stages involved in training and at the same time why training is very essential in an organization doesn't matter the organization is small or big or medium but the training is very essential it's it's very important and it's very crucial to identify the training and before you finalize i mean before you uh, decide what type of training to be provided make sure that employee is capable of this particular training so making everything making every step regarding the training program is again essential clear so that's the end of the session i just want to ask if you have any doubts or do you have anything to share no ma'am uh -huh.